Hello, this is Nick from Breaker Press Games, and today I want to do a review. Um, I want to review Tales from the Smoking Worm. Uh, this week, the uh, um, third issue arrived on my doorstep, and uh, I figured it was a good time to uh, talk about this particular um, DCC and MCC related zine. And as I said, I haven't uh, done a review in a while, and uh, I want to talk about it. So, um, Tales from the Smoking Worm, I absolutely love, first and foremost, for its visual style. Uh, each of the zines is uh, done uh, as a uh, risographed print. Uh, risographed uh, utilizes a, uh, a toothpaste-like uh, soy-based ink that goes through a uh, rice paper screen of the uh, image for the print. And uh, this is a, a type of machine that was really popular in the 80s for, uh, for printing. And a lot of them will do like two color. And so, um, for example, this particular issue has um, black and like a teal type color uh, that and they can be layered over each other. Uh, it's a beautiful look. The uh, drawback uh, to risograph printing is that uh, can't print on gloss. Um, it's got to be on uncoated paper, and uh, the ink can come off on your fingers, just like with newsprint. Um, I did a, a first a first and second draft of this video, and uh, I just had to go wash my hands because holding these with, uh, it's a little sweaty in here, and uh, uh, talking for 20 minutes, I ended up getting my fingers covered in a little bit of ink. So that was vis vis visible on camera. Um, so... Uh, the visual style is great. Uh, Trevor, um, and I'm assuming probably the rest of them, uh, definitely care about um, aesthetics and beautiful art. I know Trevor collects RPG art. Um, and so the zines are just absolutely beautiful. Um, all of them, uh, from a standpoint of visual style, are things that I want to have in my collection. And that's why I have all three. Um, additionally, so... What is Tales from the Smoking Worm? What is unique about this as a DCC or MCC zine? Uh, Tales from the Smoking Worm definitely has a very uh, um, like early 80s, late 70s TSR type of vibe where Dragon Magazine was a compilation of a bunch of different content uh, that you could... Uh, you know, pull different things from. You might be like, oh, that's an interesting article, but it's something that I'm not going to use at my table. Oh, this particular article, this, uh, you know, character class, or whatever, I definitely use that at my table, that sort of thing. And so, uh, Tales from the Smoking Worm uh, definitely has that very, like, you know, 80s Dragon Magazine kind of vibe. Um, and you know that that's, that's where they're coming from because they uh, will put, like, historical references you know the the paladin uh, adaption that they have in issue number one it goes through the history of different variations of the paladin both in literature and in different arc arc um, incarnations of D, &D um, both in uh, dragon magazine and different editions of editions of D, &D. and so they they really kind of give you a bit of the history of uh, some of the things that they talk about um uh, one of the things that comes across very well is that uh, they are um, a, a very well-read group of, of folks. Um, each of the articles starts with a, uh, a quote from literature or from a song, more often literature, and um, gives, you a, gives you a vibe before you jump into the article. It's something that I, I think is, is really great. And then, as I said, a lot of the articles start with a little bit of the history um, of where where they pulled this thing from. As far as binding content, uh, these three issues, and I haven't shown number one yet, um, issue number one, issue number two, and issue number three, across these three issues, there is um, an article, um, uh, each pertaining to cult uh, or rituals, um, and the ritual magic. Ritual magic is something that is referenced in, there's two pages in the DCC rule book uh, that uh, um, reference ritual magic, which is stronger than uh, traditional magic uh, spells. Um, you have to utilize, you know, multiple uh, uh, spellcasters coming together in order to 
you know, create the rich or cast the ritual. Um, they are hard to find, um, and uh, there will be sacrifices involved. And when mechanically, when you are casting these, uh, instead of rolling a d20 action die, you're rolling like a d8, a d7, or a d6, something real small, and then adding all sorts of bonuses for how many followers are involved in the casting, and what is the sacrifice, um, etc. So um, these articles, there's three of them. They, they kind of give you a variety of ways, a number of different rituals, and collected together they give you a kind of a sense of how you would create your own rituals um, for different uh, uh, patrons or uh, deities uh, one of the things that is less gameable about these is they aren't the type of thing that you're like I'm going to cast this uh, because they take multiple days and require multiple casters in some case or multiple hours and multiple casters um, and a big sacrifice. And so they are the type of things that would work really well for like the end of uh, an adventure where you're trying to like in, uh, you know, classic, you know, pulpy films, you're trying to break the uh, the ritual as it's being cast or something like that. Um, it's definitely that sort of thing. Um, We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Other things that have been consistent across the three issues, uh, you've got um, you've got a patron in each issue. Uh, issue number one has Cthulhu. Second uh, issue has uh, has um, uh, King of the Beasts. Third issue has Dornieves. Dornieves. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, but uh, uh, you know each of these patrons. Uh, you know, some of them I would use at the table and some of them I wouldn't. Um, Cthulhu is the type of thing that I wouldn't use in my fantasy games. I know that, that Cthulhu does appear in fantasy literature. Um, and it was also, you know, famously in uh, um, the f first version of Deities and Demigods. Um, but, uh, but it doesn't really fit with my campaign set setting and how I envision it. But if I was playing uh, uh, Cain Cathane's Ghostly Crime... Um, which is a, a very a modern variation on DCC um, that's very much in the vein of like X-Files investigation type of uh, paranormal uh, type of thing or uh, Blackout of Crater Valley, I could totally see, uh, which is more like 80s, 80s, uh, um, uh, 80s, you know, teen horror. Um, I would definitely, um, you know, consider pulling uh, Cthulhu as a patron in, in one of those games. Um, but King of the Beasts is a neutral kind of like Tarzan inspired type of uh, patron uh, that gives you, uh, you know, animal summit or not animal summoning, speak with animals type spells and things like that. Um, and uh, uh, the one that I like the most that the one that I can't pronounce Dornieves, Dornieves um, uh, is an earth elemental and um like some of some of the uh, patron abilities, there's one patron ability uh, or invoke patron um, thing on the invoke patron chart, and each of these patrons has the full, just like in the DCC rule book, uh, your uh, your patron spells, your patron taint, um, patron familiars, your patron spell burn, so all of those things. Um, but one of these one of these uh, patron uh, uh, invoke patron uh, abilities uh, I absolutely would have loved to see in a full-blown spell let's see if I can find it brittle slate uh, target becomes brittle breaking along sagittal fault lines any hit causing more than 10 points of uh, hit points of damage causes an automatic critical in addition if the hit causes 15 points or more of damage it shears a random extremity off their body roll 1d5 one left arm, two right arm, three left arm or left leg, uh, four right leg, five head. If a limb is severed, target suffers an additional one d fourteen hit points of damage. If the head is severed, they die. Effect lasts one d three plus uh, caster level rounds. That type of that type of uh, of thing uh, totally could have been a scalable um, patron spell. If this zine was just an entire zine dedicated to Dornieves, Dornieves. Um, Trevor, you're going to have to tell me how that's pronounced. Um, if this was a zine just dedicated to that and it had like eight 
uh, you know, spells just for uh, for this this uh, element, Earth Elemental patron, I would eat that content up. I would love it. Um, the other thing that is consistent across all of these issues is uh, uh, Culpepper's Herbals. And this is the type of gameable content that I absolutely love. Um, first off, once again, back to visual style. Um, each of the Culpepper's articles has a uh, oversized foldout, um, which is beautiful. The first one um, explains who Wil uh, Wilhelmina Culpepper is. Um, and Wilhelmina Culpepper is a, a type of character that I could drop straight into my own campaign. I actually use occupational names in the, the uh, setting around Stenard. Um, and occupational names, it's their nobles will grant peasants their names in a demeaning way, referring to their their occupation. And so um, Culpepper, an herbalist that culls peppers, yeah, that is totally, uh, totally in my wheelhouse and could, you know, pull that out uh, right off the bat and utilize that in, in my own setting. Um, but there is an absolute dedication to herbs and how herbs are used in real life um, in, the, in these articles like Adder's False Tongue. Um, they break down what the shoots do, what the leaves do, what the flowers do, and what the roots do. Um, and each of them can do different things. Um, and that's just like how real herbs are. The, the leaves or the flower might be like a, like a strawberry. Uh, the uh, the um, leaves of the strawberry are technically poisonous, but strawberries themselves are delicious. Or um, how, uh, um, what would be another good example? I don't know. I don't have time for that. Um, but that is exactly how, how herbs work. And so like with Adder's False Tongue, um, the leaves... Uh, give you bonuses against like scorpion stings and wasp stings. Um, so if you got st stung by a giant wasp, it would be super effective uh, uh, in order to uh, um, help your uh, your save against that. Um, whereas the flowers can be turned into a poison that does an additional 2d3 hit points of damage or even could do wisdom damage. Um, all these herbs are very gameable. Something that I, especially because my, my campaign is very low magic, this is stuff that I would pull straight out of here and utilize in my games. Love it. So, um, other things that uh, there is a comic that is in every issue um, called Onward Retainer. Uh, very, very uh, much in the vein of, uh, of uh, early Dragon Magazine where they had Wormy and other uh, running comics. Um, there is also uh, crossword puzzles or word scrambles that are in, in each, each issue. Um, so that's, that's cool. And then usually each issue has a monster. Um, and so like in this first issue, there is the, uh, uh, both the telepathic rat and the uh, silver ball. Silver ball is a way of being able to drop characters into other, uh, other settings. Uh, great device that somebody that's new to DCC and does a lot of one shots using uh, the various published adventures. Oh, hey, you you uh, at the end of the adventure, you get attacked by this silver ball It envelops the characters and then they can be dropped somewhere else in time or in another dimension or another planet or whatever you want to do. Um, very convenient uh, way to uh, to, you know, cross uh, a party uh, across great um great distance or across dimensions so um yeah tales from the smoking worm overall it is just a fantastic zine that really um one it shows an absolute love for rpgs and rpg history a love for for literature um and it has something for everybody um yeah it, i i i can't because of the fact that it is such a beautiful product and there's something that I can use in every single issue, um, this is like an auto buy every time uh, Trevor and crew put the put up a Kickstarter. And I do believe um, they've got issue number four all planned out. And I imagine that Kickstarter is going to be coming soon since uh, issue number three has shipped. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that uh, because this is this is great. Um, gameable content. It is a good read and it is just gorgeous. 
Um, I'm sure there's more that I wanted to say, um, but uh, I think that's a good point to end on. Uh, highly recommended Tales from the Smoking Worm. Uh, this is Nick from Breaker Press Games. Um, thank you for supporting indie games and indie game designers, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.